uh, our attendees um, and everyone here, panelists. So I, but the structure of this program is we have one hour a live webinar, and um, it, it the focus is to for it to be more interactive because the goal is to share the experiences that our ID specialists, our pulmonologists, um, uh, other medical doctors who are on the forefront of treating this um, uh, pandemic um, uh, can share their experience so that uh, each clinician can be uh, helped both in Pakistan and US. So we are learning over the past uh, six times, today is our seventh uh, program. And uh, all of the programs really have been very, very uh, interactive and very um, helpful, I think, for everybody, uh, including panelists, attendees, and speakers. So, um, so with that, what I will do is that I will um, ask first uh, our speaker uh, today um, to introduce herself. She. Um, uh, um, uh, our our um, speaker who was on the on the schedule um, did not feel well, Dr. Mahmoud Alam. So, um, uh, you know, we uh, asked uh, Dr. Temur, who is also our uh, merit uh, member for a long time and very active, and ID specialist to be the speaker today. Uh, so, and after Sarah will introduce herself, I'll ask mm -hmm. panelists to introduce themselves. And rest of the attendees, please, can you, uh, on the chat box, introduce yourself uh, so that each one of us know each other and so that we can have a better interactive and focused um, uh, program. So uh, go ahead, Sarah, please introduce yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I'm Sara Temur. Um, as uh, uh, Shahid said, I'm an infectious disease doctor um, in, at Mount Sinai uh, in New York, uh, in New York City. Uh, my focus within infectious disease is immune compromised host ID. Um, but right now we're involved in a lot of COVID work um, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Sara. Um, so, um, I would ask Dr. Kabani to introduce herself, one of the panelists. Yes, uh, this is uh, Dr. Kabani. I'm, I'm a pulmonary critical care physician. I work in telecritical care across multiple states, and uh, um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm, in, uh, I'm in Houston, sorry. Okay, good. Thank you, Dr. Kobani. I will ask Dr. Zenith Safdar, our uh, other panelist, to please introduce herself. Dr. Zenith, go ahead. Can you hear me? Deeply. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, I'm a pulmonary critical care, and uh, I also work in Houston. Um, I run the uh, Houston Methodist Lung Center, and um, I run the pulmonary hypertension center here. Okay, great. Are you um, in the same program that um, Dr. Faisal Masood is? GG, yes, yes. He okay. runs the CVICU and I run the lung center and the pH center. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, he, he's quite busy, but he's very much involved in our program, in this program, as well as the previous programs that Merit has done. Um, all right, so with that, I will invite um, uh, Dr. Sara Temur to, uh, to begin um, her talk, uh, sharing her experience or whatever you would like to talk for the next 10, 10 15 minutes. All right, so this has to be in Urdu or English or mix? Mix, whatever okay. you're all right. comfortable with. That's easy, okay, all right. Um, so, I mean, this is informal. I haven't prepared anything, but um, basically, as I said, we are involved in COVID work right now. New York, Kapo, Patay, Yam, for Bawad, Zalda cases. And um, I can talk a little bit about the preventive aspect of things and then talk a little bit about the treatment options that we have or, you know, the lack of treatment options, um, as I think we're all familiar uh, with this virus. So, just say, I'm a you know, brand new virus. We don't know anything about it. 
जो हमें पता है वो मैं थोड़ा सा बताना चाहूंगी ये एक बेरा कोरोना वायरस है um and uh, it basically evolved from uh, coronavirus in animals and then started infecting humans um basically aap aap logo ko yaad hoga 2003 mein ek sars ka outbreak aaya tha 2003 se 2004 mein in asia aur ab ye dusra sars ka outbreak hai ye dono corona viruses hain basically purane outbreak aur is outbreak mein fark uh, basically ek fark ye hai dono viruses jo hain wo शदीद इन्फ्लमेशन कॉज करते हैं लंग्स में जिसको हम सार्स कहते हैं एंड दैट्स वाई दीज वायरस आर डेडली कम्पेयर टू यूजल कोरोना वायरस जिनकी वजह से हम सबको जुकाम खांसी जुकाम होता है हर साल होता है लेकिन बेसिकली फर्क ये है कि जो पुराना कोरोना वायरस था वो ज्यादातर आपके लंग्स के अंदर रेप्लीकेट करता था जो सार्स वायरस था इसलिए वो एक इंसान से दूसरे इंसान में इतना ज्यादा फैल नहीं सका एंड इट इन्फेक्टेड फ्यूअर पीपल इट किल्ड सर्टनली द केस फेटेलिटी रेट वॉज हाई लेकिन वो बहुत ज्यादा लोगों में फैल नहीं सका इस वायरस का मसला यह है कि आप एसिम्टोमेटिक हैं जब आपके सिम्टम्स हैं भी नहीं और शायद आपके सिम्टम्स बहुत माइल्ड हैं उस वक्त ये वायरस एक्चुअली सबसे ज्यादा एक्टिव है एंड एक इंसान से दूसरे इंसान में फैलता है और इस तरीके से बहुत से लोग जो हैं वो इन्फेक्ट हुए हैं सो प्रिवेंशन इज बेसिकली की विद दिस वायरस टू ट्राई एंड प्रिवेंट Uh, circulation of the virus in the in the community and uske liye like you know i'm sure you're all familiar like there's hand washing for 20 seconds with soap and water use of the alcohol based hand sanitizer as much as you can uh cleaning of all commonly touched surfaces with some kind of surface cleaner bleach is preferable but any kind of surface cleaner at least once a day at homes obviously several times a day um in hospitals and in clinics um iske alawa like jo protective equipment hai uh, pakistan mein of course and we can talk a little bit about what's possible in pakistan with the resources we have available lekin ye hai ke gown hai like gloves hain aur uske alawa jo hai wo surgical mask hai airborne precautions precautions have been talked about and har jo badi agency hai cdc who they've gone back and forth about whether um the use of an n95 mask ya phir airborne precaution ki zarurat hai ya nahi hai and it's unclear शुरू में जब उन्होंने एयरबोर्न प्रिकॉशन सबके लिए कहा था दैट वाज बिकॉज वी डिड नॉट नो व्हाट दिस वायरस वाज एंड एवरीबडी फेल्ट के जी बेहतर ये है कि हम सबसे हाई लेवल प्रिकॉशन जो है इस्तेमाल करें सो फार लाइक इतना ज्यादा लाइक इसका एयरबोर्न स्प्रेड है लेकिन नॉट टू बी एक्सटेंड कि आप आप जरूरी है कि एयरबोर्न प्रिकॉशन यूज करें सो पाकिस्तान में डिपेंडिंग अगर आपके पास एन नहीं है सो दैट्स ओके एज लॉन्ग एज यूर वेयरिंग सर्जिकल मास्क यू कैन ट्राई एंड और अगर आपको रीयूज करना पड़ रहा है विच इज एन आइडियल आप अपने मास्क को दूसरे मास्क के अगर आपके पास एक एंड नाइनटी फाइव है जो आप रीयूज करें उसको आप सर्जिकल मास्क के साथ कवर करें एंड देन हैंड हाइजीन बिटवीन पेशेंट एक्सेट्रा एंड दैट्स अ वे टू ट्राई एंड करटेल द स्प्रेड ऑफ द वायरस और अगर कोई भी हेल्थ केयर वर्कर या कोई भी इंसान बीमार होता है सो दे हैव टू बेसिकली क्वारंटीन दम सेल्स uh for 14 days and if they don't develop symptoms that's when they can go back to um uh, uh, the hospital or wherever they are working um iske bare mein agar koi sawal hai i can address now otherwise i can move on and talk a little bit about jo hum treatments kar rahe hain which is the main struggle right you can you can continue that uh, talk for another maybe 3 4 minutes or whatever okay. then we can open up the questions and family sure so matlab uh, prevention ke alawa like you know one of the biggest struggles has been treatment of patients jinko severe infection ho jati hai so first and foremost i'd like to say ke bahut zyada misinformation hai in the media there's lots of uh, information that's out in the lay media jo ke logon ko misinform kar rahi hai about about uh, treatment options for this virus is virus ke liye filhal koi curative options nahi hai koi effective treatment options nahi hai based on laboratory data like you know cells ke upar virus ko test karne pe unhone uh, there's data on hydroxychloroquine that's the extent of the data iska ye matlab nahi hai ki ye human body mein kaam karega koi clinical data nahi hai iske alawa ek aur jo result aaya tha main aap sab logon ke sath iske baad like uh, shayad ke sath link share kar dungi you can see it for yourself lekin like france se abhi jo recently study aayi thi saying ki ji aap hydroxychloroquine aur azithromycin ke combination ko istemal kare to wo jo hai it it's it's beneficial and wo study aaj retract to ya medical journal say and it's been uski methodology has been found faulty like so ye sari dawaiyan jo hai they are an option because you don't have any other options right now uh but you know essentially like you know the main thing is supportive 
लाइक जो जो जीनत कर सकते हैं या दूसरे um, जो क्रिटिकल केयर हमारे पल्मोनोलॉजिस्ट हैं लाइक वेंटिलेशन एंड शी कैन टॉक मोर अबाउट ट्रीटमेंट्स फॉर दैट देर माइट बी अ रोल फॉर स्टेरॉइड्स और अदर एंटी इन्फ्लामेटोरीज फॉर लंग इंजरी कोई अगर आर्ट्स डेवलप करता है दिस इज असेंशियली अडल्ट रेस्पिटोरी डिस्ट्रेस सिंड्रम उस रेल में लाइक स्टेरॉइड्स या दूसरे एंटी इन्फ्लामेटोरीज का शायद यू नो रोल है जब आपको सवियर इन्फेक्शन डिवेलप हो जाता है इसके अलावा ट्रीटिंग लाइक बैक्टीरियल नमोनिया जो कि ऑन टॉप ऑफ एवरीथिंग डिवेलप हो सकते हैं बट बेसिकली एज फार एज एन एंटी वायरल इज कंसर्न बहुत सी चीजें जो है वो ट्रायल्स में है कुछ ट्रायल्स हमारे अस्पताल में है बहुत सी जगहों पर हो रहे हैं उनके भी मैं नाम आप लोग को भेज सकती हूँ टू सी वट माइट बी अवेलेबल इन पाकिस्तान लेकिन आई वुड लाइक टू रिएटरेट कि इसका फिलहाल कोई इलाज नहीं है अनफॉर्चुनेटली Okay, um, so uh, because we have uh, been backlogged by questions, that's why I I requested uh, Sarah to um, to keep the introductory uh, comments to minimum, and so let's uh, dive right into the questions that have been uh, asked of us on our websites and uh, and WhatsApp groups also. So let me start. Um, one is that is it true that a common um uh, notion out there that summer weather the hot weather will be good in the sense that uh, there won't be any activity for the virus or less activity yes sir and i can comment on that um that's actually not true um you know i mean again we're still learning about this virus but ye virus jo hai australia mein bhi phaila hai south america mein bhi phaila hai jahan par is waqt summer uh, time hai the feeling is ki jitne bhi containment efforts and jo sab kuch ho raha hai iski wajah se is virus ki activity kam hogi summer mein lekin and you know but it will research it 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 doesn't seem to be dependent on the weather like the influenza so it's not expected to disappear just because garmi aa rahi hai okay um Junaid has asked a question that a lot of K N95 masks are in the market, um, and how do they compare uh, in efficacy with N95? I actually did it today for my office because we we had ordered from China and we got uh, K N95, and some of the staff said, "Oh, oh why not N95 and why K95?" So I learned that recently FDA actually approved it. the difference is only that one is made in china and one is that chinese standard and one is the us standard but sara go ahead and uh, please uh, uh, no you're absolutely right hamare bhi jo um, shipment aayi hai of masks especially jo small size kind 95 uh, that's in shortage because that's what most people use and hamare bhi ek um, n95 is like i and like which are fda approved as you said so it should be the same like it really shouldn't be very different लेकिन मैं ये कहूंगी कि अगर आप एंड आई विल फुल डिस्क्लोजर लाइक हमारे अस्पताल में भी जस्ट दिस पास वीक यू नो इट्स इट पीपीई हैज बीन इन गुड सप्लाई लेकिन एन नाइनटी फाइव जो थे उन्होंने हमें कहा था कि कम से कम एक दिन के लिए आप री यूज करें सो आई विल टेल यू लाइक आप उसके ऊपर सर्जिकल मास्क पहने लाइक वेन यू यूज यू एन नाइनटी फाइव सो यू कैन कीप री यूजिंग इट अफ्यू टाइम्स दैट वे यू प्रोटेक्टेड फ्रॉम दी आउटर एनवायरमेंट फ्रॉम स्टेनिंग और एनी काइंड ऑफ सॉइलिंग okay so i will i know that our other panelists are more uh, you know uh, dr kabani and um, zinat safter uh, pulmonologist so i will get uh, to you guys but uh, and and dr mohan is our cardiologist so um uh, but let me uh, move to the next one um is it possible to contract this disease twice like other usual uh, notion is that once you contract a viral illness then you develop immunity and you don't get it again yes yeah so uh, the answer to this question again unfortunately is not entirely clear uh, the expectation is ke is virus ke sath immunity hogi just like dusre corona viruses ke sath hoti hai lihaza agar aapko reinfection hoti bhi hai it won't be as severe as when you are not immune but this is a question of research uh, active research right now 
uh, plasma from um, uh, people who have recovered from corona, uh, from COVID-19 is in fact being uh, explored as treatment for those who have active infection. So I think with data, we will know that the antibodies have a neutralizing effect and how many offer immunity. Like and right now, we feel that that will be the case, or eventually, as the outbreak goes on, a herd immunity will be public, and as the as the herd gets sick, its because of protection offer will be. But it is not clear yet. All right. Any of the panelists um, would like to pitch in at any time um, is welcome to add to these comments or quest, uh, answers to these questions. Um, doing a great know. job. Uh, Dr. Kabani, go ahead. No, I was just saying Sarah is doing a great job. What she said is exactly true about the immunity. We don't know yet. Uh, this virus is very new, mutating, and we don't know which direction it's going to go into. So, um, but most importantly, I think I agree with her that the uh, we should expect another surge uh, even if it settles down in the summer which we don't know yet whether it will but come fall we will we could have another surge of this right so dr zenith Sartar, you wanted to add something g can you hear me g g sure go ahead um, that's exactly right actually you know uh, there have been multiple cases where initially test negative hai aur baad mein phir positive ho jata hai there actually there was a case in our hospital jahan do dafa negative tha uh, covid ka test even by pcr aur the patient could discharge kar diya on regular antibiotic and the patient again came back and this time the third time uh, again, it was negative, but because the symptoms were so strong, they actually put the patient in isolation or treating as COVID positive, although the testing is negative. So there's a lot of time where the testing is not uh, really positive, um, but you just go with the symptoms. And we don't know if patients will get, and I agree with Sarah completely, this is like a, a, a learning, learning about this uh, uh, virus and learning on the go and trying to learn very fast. Okay, thank you. Um, so any of the attendees, uh, if they have any question, they can just raise your uh, the hand and that's I think it's a digital clicking of the hand and I see already one hand. So I can get to Rizwan name. Uh, thank you, Rizwan. You're, uh, you can unmute and talk. So uh, what I would say is this, that uh, what we use as a- Rizwan, uh, you, you please introduce yourself. I know you, but uh, for others- so I'm, I'm, I'm Dr. Rizwan Naeem. I'm at New York at Montefiore Medical Center. I'm director of molecular pathology lab, and we are doing a lot of this testing in-house. I'm a molecular, I do a lot of molecular virology, including COVID-19. So what I was saying is that uh, the protocol we use in our hospital is this, that when patient comes in, you test them with PCR and only positive we call is someone who is positive by PCR. And then if that patient is discharging, then we do another PCR, actually two PCRs in consecutive days, one day and the next day. And if both comes negative, then we, after that, then we do an immunological test, which is antibody test, which just proves that this patient was infected and now has developed antibodies against that infection, that virus. And then that we call that patient as a negative patient. Otherwise, it can always be an active patient with, uh, without, uh, without doing an antibody test. You really do not know if that uh, is as she developed or has the infection has gone gone away. Rizwan, you have antibody check karne ka kya time frame hai? Like when do you? Uh, uh, ten days. Ten days. Ten days from the infection. Okay. And it seems to correlate with clinical recovery in that time frame. Right. Like so you're we, finding the antibody. We only do in patient where we see that there's some recovery. Got it. So I see a question from uh, uh, Mohammed Naeem, and I'm going to uh, ask them. Naeem, can you please ask yourself? I uh, didn't get quite get your written answer, a written question. Go ahead, Mohammed Naeem. 
Assalamu alaikum. To everybody, uh, I am Dr. Naeem Khan Gujrawala, Pakistan. I want to ask you, sir, that the patients who have survived from COVID-19 and are the symptoms that we look at, are they changing, or 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 are they changing, proper guideline बनाए towards the diagnosis and towards the treatment. आया कि ऐसा कोई statistics available हैं कि यहाँ maintain किए जा रहे हैं जिसे हम आगे बढ़के हम tentative diagnosis और उसकी treatment की तरफ जा सकें वरना हम तो इधर भूल बलकियों में ही फंसे रहेंगे कि कब करना है पीसीआर कब डायग्नोसिस होगा उसका जो टेन डेज का जो पीरियड बताया अभी डॉक्टर साहब ने उसमें तो हम जो डिप्रेशन के जो सिम्टम्स हैं वो तो इतने हाईली पेशेंट को डिस्टर्ब कर देंगे कि उसकी सारी मूवमेंट्स बाउंड हो जाएंगी मैं ये चाहता हूं कि हमें कोई ऐसी गाइडलाइन मिल जाए जिसकी बुनियाद पे हम पेशेंट को रिएश्योर भी कर सकें या फिर आगे मूव कर सकें कि ये हम आगे हमारी ये गाइडलाइन है ट्रीटमेंट की। थैंक यू वेरी मच। आई कैन आंसर सम ऑफ दिस। एक सिर्फ डॉक्टर मोहम्मद आप अगर अपना ईमेल हमें भेज दें तो मैं आपको थोड़ा सा मटेरियल भेज सकती हूँ कि ये क्या एल्गोरिथम है या क्या ट्रीटमेंट अप्रोच जो है वो यूज़ हो रही ह and um, you know, from what I've heard, like I don't think this is official. Like in the NIH, uski taraf se a treatment guidance jo hai is expected soon. Just just ke saath, like just sari approach everywhere is is expected to become standardized because everybody needs guidance at this point in time. But I can share that material with you, um, you know, if you like. But um, just to speak briefly, matlab after exposure. Zadatar Panch in me, you are expected to have symptoms like the median is five days. It can go up to 12 to 13 days, like the range is with the Vata Jati, like in Aksarokat Panch, then my logon ko symptoms should ho jate hai. It's my Zada upper track symptoms nahi hai, which is interesting. UK virus bohat Zada either fell a replicate karta hai. Like in Zadatar logon ko bohar hai, which keep in mind though, ke bohar zururi nahi hai. लेकिन ज़्यादा तो लोगों को बुखार है, इसके अलावा खांसी है, जो ज़्यादातर ड्राई खांसी है, और फिर जब आपके सिम्टम्स शुरू होते हैं, तो यूज़ुअली छः से सात दिन के ऊपर इस व्हेन यू कैन डेवलप शॉर्टनेस ऑफ़ ब्रेथ, और उसके चांसेस जो हैं, और वो बहुत बुरे सार्स के चांसेस जो so clinical manifestations vary karti hain. Many log dekhi hain jinko sirf diarrhea hai. Like you know and I kind of like you know said no like you know initially ke nahi ye nahi ho sakta but that person tested positive and eventually went on to develop some respiratory symptoms but initially it might just be fever and diarrhea. So ye kehna thoda mushkil hai. Lekin initial diagnosis ke liye of course jaysay Rizwan keh rahe te aapko PCR chahiye. Aapko nasal like swab chahiye or PCR chahiye wo agar aapko available hai ya nahi hai. But uh, depending on what's going on, Pakistan may be, of course, there is a lot of COVID from what I've heard. Punjab may be more than that. Sindh may be more than that, but now it's a little contained. So it's something that obviously you should be thinking about it and, you know, uh, treating it as such. Okay, in this line, the Muhammad Naeem has asked, the Muhammad Azeem Imran also wants to ask him, let me um, allow him to talk uh, himself. Ji, Azim, Azim Imran. Assalamualaikum. Ji, ji. Assalamualaikum, sir. Assalamu to everybody. मेरा ये क्वेश्चन है कि हमें पीसीआर हाउ ऑफ़न वी शुड रिपीट द पीसीआर एंड एंटीबॉडी टेस्ट इज़ सो दैट वी कैन से दैट द पेशेंट इज़ फुल क्योर. थैंक यू. I can I can answer this, Shahid. Ji, ji, go ahead. So the bottom line is this, that even in US now, I know that Pakistan has a lot of availability of PCR in Pakistan. And now, hopefully, from the next week, some companies are shipping the kits, which is reliable. Now, I understand that our Khan is one place where reliability of tests is. But unfortunately, I was talking to a pathologist friend in Lahore today, 
ही सेट के उनके पास जो सैंपल आते हैं वो कराची भेज नहीं सकते क्योंकि ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जहाज नहीं चल रहे तो उनको जो है वो बहुत मुश्किल है इवन लाहौर जैसे शहर में बट ही वो सेइंग दैट के उम्मीद है कि कल आठ तारीख से दस तारीख के दरमियान जो है किट्स आ जाएंगी और लोग जो है टेस्ट करना शुरू करेंगे मगर मैं बात जवाब ये देना चाह रहा था कि टेस्ट सिर्फ उन्ही लोगों का होता है शुरू में जिनको सिम्टम्स हैं जिसको क्लिनिशियन कहता है कि हाँ भाई कि ये जो है ही इज मोर प्रॉब्ली हैव इन्फेक्शन उसको कंफर्म करने के लिए आप पीसीआर का टेस्ट करते हैं राइट right? मगर अगर आपके पास पीसीआर का टेस्ट अवेलेबल नहीं है तो आप सिम्टम से ही सिर्फ उसको फिलहाल जो है वो आइसोलेट करें या उस पर जो जो ट्रीटमेंट जैसे सारा इन्होंने बताया सारा ने बताया कि ट्रीटमेंट तो कोई है नहीं बट बहरहाल उसको जो जो भी प्रोटोकॉल है जो भी गाइडलाइंस है उसको फॉलो करें जस्ट बाय सिम्टम्स दैट्स व्हाट आई सजेस्ट और इसकी एग्जांपल मैं आपको दूंगी यहाँ पर भी गाइडेंस इतनी दफा चेंज हुई है सो so, पहले जो गाइडेंस थी वो ये थी कि जी अगर आपको लाइक माइल्ड सिम्टम्स हैं आप बहुत ज्यादा बीमार नहीं है तो आपको टेस्टिंग ऑफर नहीं हो रही लेकिन चूंकि इतना ज्यादा कोविड दुनिया में फैला हुआ है लाइक like, उन लोगों के लिए गाइडेंस ये है कि जी आप कम से कम सात दिन के लिए घर पे रहें आप अपने आप को सेल्फ मॉनिटर करें जिसका मतलब ये है कि आप दिन में दो दफा अपना टेम्परेचर चेक करें आप अपना खांसी सांस ये सारे सिम्टम्स मॉनिटर करें और जब आप सेवेंटी टू आवर्स के लिए आपका ख्याल है कि जी आप जी आपने देखा है कि आपको बुखार नहीं है और आपके खांसी वगैरह के सिम्टम्स जो है वो खत्म हो गए हैं या रिजोल्व हो गए हैं लाइक तो दैट्स वेन यू कैन safely go out in the community again lekin usme bhi phir ye guidance hai ki kam se kam 14 din ke liye after that like aap mask pehne so is ye sari guidance jo hai ye aap jaise apne mareezon ko bata sakte hain jo ghar mein rehte hain etc ki kam se kam ek hafte ke liye aap dur rehne ki koshish kare aur jab tak aap 72 hours ke liye behtar nahi ho jate baaki ghar walon ke sath etc na interact kare ya wapas kaam pe na jaye aur mere ye baat add karna chahungi 80% of the people sorry आप अपने घर में रहे बाहर ना जाए दुकानों में ना जाए रेस्टोरेंट में ना जाए लोगों से ना मिले से ना मिले अपने घर में रहे जब तक ये आउटब्रेक जो है ये खत्म नहीं हो जाता अगर हम मिलेंगे भी उन लोगों से मिलेंगे जो एसिम्टोमेटिक हैं, वी विल बी द वन पासिंग ओवर टू टू अदर पीपल एंड हमने यहाँ देखा है अमेरिका में भी कि यहाँ भी किट्स अवेलेबल नहीं है हमें भी हमें भी ट्रियाज करना पड़ता है कि हम किसको टेस्टिंग कर रहे हैं किसी को नहीं आई नो आई वॉज टॉकिंग टू समी वन ऑफ द प्रोग्राम डायरेक्टर इन जमे का हॉस्पिटल एंड देवर टेलिंग मी कि हम एक एन मास्क को पांच दिन के लिए हमें कहा जा रहा है यूज करो फाइव डेज बिकॉज नहीं है अवेलेबिलिटी अगर कि ये बिल्कुल फैल जाता है तो यहाँ अमेरिका जैसी जगह में भी किट्स अवेलेबल नहीं है टेस्टिंग अवेलेबल नहीं है मास्क अवेलेबल नहीं है तो वी जस्ट हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल कि हम प्रिवेंट करें अपनी मूवमेंट को मिनिमाइज करें लेकिन डॉक्टर सफदर आपने कहा कि वो दे वर यूजिंग फॉर फाइव डेज इज एन एन नाइनटी फाइव इज री यूज जी कहते तो ये है कि इट कैन बी यूज फॉर फाइव टाइम्स फाइव टाइम्स मीनिंग व्हाट फाइव पेशेंट्स नहीं फाइव टाइम्स अगर आपने एक दफा उतारा है अच्छा अगर आपने उतारा है और दोबारा पहना है तो दैट इज वन टाइम मगर अब उन्होंने नए वो तरीके निकाले हैं एडवाइज हाउ टू टेक ऑफ द मैस्क प्रॉपरली सो यू डोंट टेक इट ऑफ एवरी टाइम यू जस्ट कीप इट ऑन फॉर द होल डे एंड यूज इट एंड देन यूज इट फॉर फाइव डेज Mm. and also to cover the mask with a surgical mask that's what most people are doing yeah uh, or so, shield face shield bhi bhi laga le agar aap to usse bhi uski life increase ho jayegi so ek ek uh, shayad another yes. point is this the, the, the same with the mask thing ki abhi fda ne jo hai na kn mask jo hai wo bhi approve kiye hain healthcare right. providers talk about that right so they are they are much more available they are manufactured in china probably and they can be more available in pakistan probably which i understand and which are cheaper also number 2 abhi cdc ne ek aur guideline change ki hai pehle unhone kaha tha ki jo log infected nahi hai aam public mein hai unko mask pehnne ki zarurat nahi hai but now with more data they have changed that guidelines and say ke it is recommended it is not necessary but recommended to have some type of coverage 
even if you don't have infection, even if you have no symptoms of uh, infection, but if you are in public places, you should cover your nose with something, with some type of mask, or if nothing else, by dupatta or by mask, by scarf or by pagadi, whatever is available. So Kaleem, um, uh, you wanted to add something. Kaleem is our uh, intensivist and uh, pulmonary specialist as well as sleep specialist. Uh, thank you, uh, Shahid. Uh, yes, I want to um, say something about the sensitivity of PCR. It's a very common, as a lot of our uh, colleagues have already mentioned, that uh, there are suspecting cases and the PCR test, uh, RT-PCR, is coming negative, but the clock clinical picture is so suggestive that they keep treating them as COVID-19. So um, the last time I reviewed the data, uh, the nasopharyngeal swab uh, in three to five days of, from the time of contact with uh, COVID-19 uh, is positive only by 65 to 70%. Uh, Rizwan might, uh, you know, shared some light on this, but there is this data and the new testing has changed anything or not. So uh, the sensitivity is not the way we want. So specificity is yes, 100%, there is no false positive, but the, there is uh, up, up to 30% chance of having a false negative. And that's the reason the SEC recommendation is that if somebody is intubated, if you have intubated someone, then you swap it deeper suction tracheal aspirate ko per PCR kare. So that's one thing which uh, I want to make sure that the people understand that. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Kaleem. So um, let me go to another raised hand. Uh, I think it is one, uh, you want right. to say something again? Yes, yeah, so what, what I wanted to uh, people to understand that like any other diagnostic laboratory test, there is always going to be some false positive, there are always going to be false negative, which is very common. Actually, it will be much more in antibody related testing than any other testing. Or PCR testing, maybe remember it all depends how much <clears throat> and what material you are starting with. And uh, if, if you are sending your specimen across the country, which takes two or three days to reach some place, your test probably will be much higher probability for having false negative. So false negative, false positive is always possible. That's why the collection and uh, immediate transportation of the specimen to the laboratory is so critical because remember, this is also an RNA-based test. RNA is very unstable. Uh, when, when in vitro, in vivo to phir bhi survive karta hai, but in vitro it is very, very fragile and it is, fortunately this virus is covered by protein, but it's still it is RNA virus. So it is very, uh, with specimen collection and time of collection to the testing are two very important criteria. And but I would just like to add to that, and Rizwan, you can clarify if I'm wrong, but basically is the testing platform to liberalize, okay, right? Like everybody, like, you know, is allowed to use a different platform, like within a certain range to run this test. So it really depends on which assay you're using. A platform like a lot of people have developed the test commercial laboratory or in-house. So sensitivity specificity would also vary depending on, you know, testing technique, et cetera. You are absolutely right. So um, there's another question from our website uh, that uh, does the childhood BCG immunization protect you from having um, COVID-19? Sarah? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no. I haven't come across anything like that. Any of the panelists? There was some data suggesting. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Might be some mm -hmm. oh, no. G Zenith. Uh, G. May you say that there is some data. The literature was saying suggesting that the BCG vaccination is maybe some kind of an immunity develops and that protects people from um, uh, catching this disease. But we don't know exactly. And there's some also. 
डेवलपमेंट में है वैक्सीनेशन एज पार्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट मगर दिस इज अगेन ऑल इन्वेस्टिगेशनल देर इज नो गाइडलाइन अवेलेबल दिस इज ऑल एन एक डोटो डेटा विच मीन्स उन्होंने ऑब्जर्वेशन देखी है वो कह रहे हैं वो कह रहे हैं कि वाई आर पीपल नॉट डिवेलपिंग दिस डिजीज इन अफ्रीका अगर आप मैप देखती हैं पूरे वर्ल्ड के तो एवरी प्लेस देर इज जहाँ छोटे छोटे टाउन है जहाँ लोग ये डिवेलप करेंगे तो आई थिंक अगर अगर आपका सस्पेशन डिजीज का है और आप समझ रहे हैं कि इसको हो सकता है तो फिर मेरे ख्याल में सबसे बेहतर चीज यही होगी कि उन पेशेंट्स को आइसोलेट कर दें और उनको ऐसे ही ट्रीट करें कि जैसे वो कोविड पॉजिटिव हैं ऑल दो आपके पास टेस्ट रिजल्ट्स नहीं हैं बिकॉज दैट वुड बी द मोस्ट बेस्ट थिंग के कोई कर सकते हैं उन लोगों के लिए क्योंकि एक तो आप उनको बचाएंगे दूसरा ये कि उनके घर वालों को बचाएंगे नेबर्स को भी बचाएंगे पूरी फैमिली को बचाएंगे अगर घर में उनको करना है तो ये रिकमेंडेशन ये है कि वो अलहदा कमरे में सोएं अलहदा बाथरूम यूज करें और अलहदा रहें बिल्कुल लोगों से घर वालों से इंटरेक्ट कर घर में ना फैल जाए थैंक यू थैंक यू शायद जी जी जस्ट टू एड ऑन टू द सेम डिस्कशन Uh, I think it's a little, little controversial thing about the BCG thing. I think we have a discussion about this uh, uh, four days ago. Um, the there are some news report uh, that in uh, Australia, especially okay. in Melbourne, okay. there were they are doing some experimenting of uh, re-inoculating with the BCG for their healthcare worker to see on the basis of the same kind of concept. But again, it is not proven, uh, and the BCG. according to uh, id expert i'm not an id uh, when i talked to them they said that it's usually a fade away over the period of time so if you are having some bcg in the early childhood may not be as protective when you are grown up uh, and in early population so that's one thing one question which i'm going to ask the, one of the panelists uh, there's a couple of discussion here um, and i'm yet to see uh, is do we really know that uh, sars uh, covid 2 um, is has a different strain uh, it is mutating uh, do we have any documented uh, knowledge about that or we are speculating it and number 2 uh, is um, like if, if we know that in the uh, cytokine surge which is the most important thing which is killing the people um and people are developing dic um, and all sort of uh, microvascular issues uh, related to this is anybody uh, have any knowledge is somebody is trying to do plasma freezes rather than convalescent plasma therapy i know that convalescent plasma therapy has been tried in different places and there are some anecdotal data there but is there any role of uh, having plasma freezes itself uh, in terms of uh, this condition i can answer some of this um so as as far as variants are concerned uh, there's emerging data and there's there are definitely there is definitely scientific evidence ke ye virus jo hai wo mutate kar raha hai like do basic strains hai ek type 1 hai aur ek jo hai wo type 2 hai and jo type 1 strain hai wo aapke ancestral sars cov2 ke sabse kareeb hai genetically and type 1 say type 2 emerge kiya hai and type 2 is the predominant strain which is responsible for like the outbreak in china anyways and jo type 2 strain hai uske kuch uske further study ke upar there is speculation ke uski transmissibility ya virulence jo hai wo zyada hai compared to type 1 and that's why even though that wasn't the first virus that was the one that emerged from type 1 it's been it, it has been able to survive and cause so many infections and be the prominent predominant strain iske alawa ek aur cid ka paper if you look at one of the recent issues um clinical infectious disease usme they have shown ki within the host jo uh, virus ki variances shuru ho jati hain so we definitely change hota hai genetically 
लेकिन इसका एग्जैक्ट इम्पैक्ट क्या है ऑन वेरुलेंस दैट दैट रिमेंस टू बी सीन बट दिस डेफिनेटली एविडेंस दैट इट्स म्यूटेटिंग एंड देन एस फार एस प्लाज्मा आई डोंट नो स्पेसिफिकली अबाउट प्लाज्मा पेरिसिस but i was reading uh, something a few days ago and uh, they have this cytokine filter in uh, germany like that's one place where it has been used and i forget what it's called i think it's called cytosorb or something like that and we had we actually sent that uh, information about that to our nephrologist to see if there's some that's something that they think we can bring here but that's a way to remove cytokines when you're developing the crs uh um, you know and 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 they found it beneficial um in in the patients that they treated thank you okay uh, i have a, a question which uh, seems um i think very pertinent at this point and we can spend a little bit of time on that uh is that amongst the different disinfectants to you know to clean the surfaces or home or office or between the patients your uh, your exam room which are the best uh, solutions and how long does it take say for example if you cleaned it is it uh, protective after 5 minutes or 5 uh, hours so so these are the these are the uh, disinfectant that the uh, questioner has asked ditto sodium hypochlorite soap solution methylated spirit um yeah i guess or if if you have any other that you use um let us know so we start with sara so um i'll have to get details on this from uh, one of the infection one of my infection prevention colleagues who would know more about this but as far as i know is virus ko maarna itna mushkil nahi hai like it's it's easily killed with soap and water it's easily killed with alcohol based hand sanitizer and we're not recommending a specific surface cleaner especially kyunki is waqt har jagah itni zyada shortage hai etc something that's bleach based is probably best like to kill everything including covid 19 like in koi bhi surface cleaner like alcohol based or detol should probably be okay as well but i'll get back to you on details about that but it's not difficult to kill this virus sir it is in liquid with soap and water ji no no well dr kabani go ahead ji there is a list on the cdc website that i have looked at before and there is a whole list including what sara is saying soap and water is very effective in cleaning um and then also the alcohol based uh, almost all of them are alcohol based there is a list and i'm going to find it and send it to um, should i send it to you dr shahid ji i think um uh, danish uh, we have created a page or uh, is there a way people can can directly send it to that page no not right now they will have to send it to the apna merit at gmail.com and then okay. we'll have to upload and share with all the attendees uh, with all the attendees yes, yeah. because i i i know i've come across it uh, come across it and uh, uh, it's it's a very clear epa approved list of uh, um substances that are that are recommended i think that's great thank you i'd like to look at that so i'm writing please send all the references uh okay i can write but um let me see two hands raised uh, let me uh, i'll get back to you dr uh, name uh, first let me give a chance to dr uh, to najma khurshid uh, please introduce yourself and ask your question najma Uh, Najma Khurshid, um, you're on. Okay, I um, maybe there's an issue. Uh, uh, you have to unmute your speaker also. If you, if you, uh, I have unmute you, uh, but you have to do that as well. Anyway, let's move on to, and we can get back to Najma, but um, name also. have a question so name sir go ahead thank you once again uh, i am <clears throat> main dr sara se puchna chahta hu ki the jo jitne bhi medical personnel hain doctors hain paramedical staff nurses hain they are uh, well known to the symptoms which are changing in them cells 
जैसे उन्होंने कहा है कि ये सात दिन के लिए क्वारंटाइन कर लें उसके बाद फिर देखें सेल्फ क्वारंटाइन तो ये कितनी साइकिल हम क्वारंटाइन करेंगे कि इवन अप टिल नो अप टिल दैन द कोविड नाइनटीन शुड बिकम पॉजिटिव I mean, uh, virus ka ek incubation period hai na, like jo ke, jo ke din tak jata hai, udar se ye din ka like number aata hai. Lekin jaise main keh rahi thi ke median, uh, you know, like time to development of symptoms is five days, which means ke zada tar logo mein five din par symptoms aa jayenge. So if you got exposed like five days ago, by five days most people would have symptoms. So the idea, like if that has happened, like or if somebody has symptoms, the idea is to like i'm sorry for someone who's been exposed like in more asymptomatic and the idea behind the quarantine is to wait out that time period wo ye nahi hai ki wo positive ho jaye you know the idea is ki aap exposed hue the aur ab hum chahte hain ki hum aapko dusre logon se alag rakhe taaki agar aapko infection hai wo dusron ko na ho aur agar aapko us time period mein symptoms ho jate hain then the guidance is ki aap apne aap ko self monitor kare As long as long symptoms mild आप घर रह सकते हैं अगर सिम्टम्स सिवियर है ऑफकोर्स आप डॉक्टर पे जाए बट वरना आप घर पे रहे और सेवेंटी टू आवर्स तक जब तक आपका बुखार नहीं रुक जाता और सिम्टम्स कम नहीं हो जाते आप घर से बाहर ना जाए काम पे ना जाए दूसरों से इंटरेक्ट ना करें और अगर आप करें भी तो उसके बाद चौदह दिन के लिए आप मास्क पहने फॉर एडिशनल प्रोटेक्शन थैंक यू आई सी ऑल्सो Dr. Uh, Shakil Mirza, uh, one of our uh, very good friend and uh, regular attendee. Um, Shakil, do you have any um, comment or a question? Um, yes, thank you, situation? Shai. Uh, for introduction to others, I'm a consultant physician based in Rawalpindi, and I have uh, a comment on Dr. Nain's question. Basically, the what he is. concerned about is the social distancing and a possible isolation for a healthcare worker who comes into contact with the patient now dr naim if we are coming into contact with the patient again and again i am afraid we will have to start from zero again and as dr sara said we have to cover the incubation period not only the median period but the whole range which is up to 2 to 13 days so in that case the isolation needs to be for at least 13 days for that person two weeks is the usual that we are doing over here this uh, secondly is question was about symptoms but dr sar has already mentioned that 80% of the patients are asymptomatic so we just although we should be looking on the lookout for a symptom in any patient who is self isolating so that we can get them to a healthcare facility before they deteriorate and those have been very elaborately mentioned by the speakers third question is uh, my comment is on the use of igg and this is my question to dr rizwan uh, the igg and igm based test has been approved uh, elsewhere and it's available in pakistan but at the moment uh, it's not being used because it is an important tool for public health screening the only thing is that uh, the com- the combination of uh, igg igm testing and pcr that he is using i think that is the ideal thing but i think in our resource constraint setting that may not be possible and what are his recommendations for this test uh, for the use of the igg test so uh, what i thank you for the question what i i think what we have to realize that remember there is no treatment for this at present and the the only thing you can do the only thing you can do is people who develop severe symptoms and get into icu for any reason treat them symptomatically for whatever is needed to uh, get their oxygenation back itself again so diagnostic test at present only diagnostic tests which are approved are pcr based there is a test by abbot which can give you if positive results in 5 minutes and negative results by 12 or 15 minutes and and that is that is becoming very popular number 2 safiad has recently developed a test which has been shipped to pakistan 
within next two, three days, which is a cartridge-based testing. What cartridge-based testing basically means that you put your sample into a cartridge and put it in a machine and machine will give you, do the extraction and PCR amplification and results at, uh, at the same time. So there is no manipulation for that. So unfortunately, those are the two tests which are, which are but as Zara, as someone mentioned in the panel also, that uh, uh, FDA is very, very relaxed and there are many labs who have developed these testing in labs. Initially, we have done that also. But those, the, those tests have variability, very variable false positive, false negative. So it is different in different cells, tests, uh, different labs. So for example, if you're sending in Pakistan, one lab or the other lab, you cannot rely on their data. Their, their, this data cannot be uh, uniform or consistent when, with one lab to the other lab. And that, that has happened in US also, but that is much more probable when you have your own developed test. So uh, but, and unfortunately, antibody-based test, test, testing has been approved in US and people are doing it. But uh, and it's easy to do it and it's much cheaper to do it. But it is only, as you mentioned, it is for population study and it is for making sure that patient has a, a PCR a, a positive uh, a sample and then it turned into negative also by developing antibodies. You are absolutely right for that. Thank you. Okay. So um, one question that is here is that what about the point of care testing in US? Um, um, is there a, a, you know, that's, that is the current strategy in US or um, to decrease the burden along with the PCR testing? Uh, and how about uh, its implication in Pakistan or can it be, uh, is this the right time in Pakistan to, do, to develop something like that? So uh, the point of care testing is this five minutes positive test and 10 minutes, 12 minutes negative test is a point of care machine, which is a table tap, tabletop type of machine, which can be used in doctor's office and is being shipped in, as you may have seen it, about 15,000 or something have been shipped in different places in CDC and so on. So it is a point of care testing, but it requires a machine. So it will take time but it will come to Pakistan. Safir is, is a lab-based testing, but it is also a, is a machine and can be done in doctor's office. But one, one of the things which I, to uh, my Pakistani audience, I wanted to clarify and uh, remember, you remember that Pakistan, uh, usually flu season is a winter season. It's not a spring season, it's not in summer. So we all know this virus is a very fragile virus. It, it, most of the viruses do not, uh, if, they are, if it's an RNA virus, it's, it's very, very subjective uh, to destruction and, and inactivation by heat. And uh, so warm weather will help in some way or the other uh, for the spread. Number two, but winter can be very severe in Pakistan if this virus is not controlled. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think Yohan. I wanted to add something, which was the first part of the question. Usme ye ke like apko har do paper se fourteen days shuru karna padega. Like it basically depends ke apke area mein like kitni zada COVID activity hai. Like yahan par for example, like unless somebody is symptomatic, nobody is staying home because you are being exposed to COVID, right? Like so, fir us un bando ke liye recommendation ye hai, and you can take it to liberalize it to any extent. Like in for example, in our area, we have so much COVID activity here, so we are wearing a mask for all direct patient contact. You're at least wearing a surgical mask, chai kisi ko COVID hai, chai kisi ko COVID nahi hai. So obviously, you know, you have to preserve your healthcare task force. Like, ye to nahi ho sakta ki sare doctors jo hai, wo 14 din ke liye ghar baith jaye. Like, how many times are we going to do that? Uh, so, you know, unless somebody is symptomatic, you know, like if there is a lot of COVID going around, everybody is being exposed. You just take the appropriate precautions, but it should be okay for you to go to work. As long as you wash your hands, that's the number one thing. Like, you know, that's going to prevent more infections than anything else. And then you wear a mask for direct patient contact. Sure. Okay. So, um, 
so that is done. Uh, I think I was looking at um, the raised hands and I see um, the uh, Muhammad name. Do you have another um, question? So I, I'm uh, unmuting you. Muhammad name. Okay. <clears throat> Muhammad so, name. Um, um, basically, I was concerned uh, about the uh, doctors who are sitting in the periphery and they are primary healthcare workers and uh, they are doing a lot of uh, efforts to control the problems. And uh, one thing is that also that uh, they, there is a lot of patients in the, uh, in the chamber, in, in the uh, clinics. Uh, to whom they uh, come in contact with a uh, number of times. And that point is that the mere zin mein ye hai ke unke liye ye quarantine ka jo issue hai. Ek to wo aap ne keh diya ke thik hai, jab symptoms appear hoti hai, to phir aap quarantine mein chale jai. To ye bada repeatedly vicious cycles shuru ho sakta hai, ya aisa cycle hai, jasa ke Dr. Shkil sahab ne bhi kaha hai ke wo वो हर दफा ही एक 14 दिन का जो 3 to 13 या 14 डेज का साइकिल है वो चलेगा तो बार बात तो क्लियर है कि वी हैव टू सेव आवर सेल्फ्स एंड टू सेव द अदर्स ओके और शायद लेट मी से समथिंग अबाउट दिस देखें पाकिस्तान के अंदर जो है सबसे पहली बात तो ये है कि जो काम करने की जरूरत है कि डॉक्टरों को अपने क्लिनिक को रेगुलर तौर पे जैसा वो चला रहे हैं मेरा ذاتی خیال یہ ہے کہ بالکل ان کو ویسے ہی کرنا چاہیے جس طرح ہم یہاں یو ایس میں کر رہے ہیں کہ ہم ریگولر پیشنٹس کو آفس میں اگر ان کو نزلہ زکام کھانسی بخار کی کیفیت ہو رہی ہے ان کے کسی سے کانٹیکٹ ہے تو ہم ان کو اپنے کلینک میں نہیں بلا رہے ہیں انہیں ڈاکٹروں کو اپنی کلینک بند کرنی چاہیے پہلی بات تو یہ ہے کہ اگر کسی کو کووڈ کا انفیکشن ہوتا ہے تو میجورٹی آف دا ٹائم اسی فیصد سے زیادہ وقت میں ان کو مائلڈ سمٹم ہوگا ان کو پیراڈال اور پیراسٹامال دینے کے علاوہ اور باقی جو ہے چھوٹی موٹی ایسی چیزیں جن سے ان کے جو ہے چھوٹی موٹی جو سمٹم ہے وہ کم کرنے کے علاوہ آپ کے پاس کوئی ایسا نسخہ نہیں ہے جس سے آپ کووڈ کا علاج کر سکیں تو لہٰذا ان کو یہ بات سمجھنی چاہیے کہ وہ مریضوں کو اپنے دفتر بلا کر ان کا علاج نہیں کر پائیں گے بلکہ اس کی وجہ سے مرض کو مزید لوگوں تک پھیلانے میں اپنا رول پلے کریں گے تو سوشل ڈسٹینسنگ دور رکھنا یہ سب سے ضروری کام ہے اس کے علاوہ کوئی اور طریقہ کار فی الوقت نظر نہیں آتا اور اگر کسی کی طبیعت زیادہ خراب ہوتی ہے تو پھر اس کو مشورہ دینا چاہیے مسجدوں سے اعلان کروانی چاہیے یہ بات کہ اگر آپ کی طبیعت خراب ہے آپ ڈاکٹر کے پاس مت جائیں اور اگر زیادہ خراب ہوتی ہے تو اپنے ریجنل علاقے کے ہسپتالوں میں جائیں کیونکہ ڈاکٹروں کے پاس جا کر کوئی علاج نہیں ہو سکتا اس کا یہ بات ہمیں سمجھنی چاہیے جی بالکل آئی اگری کلیم آئی تھنک دیٹ واز اے ویری پرٹیننٹ میسج ناؤ دا لاسٹ آئی تھنک ون کوشچن اینڈ دین آئی آسک اف اینی بڈی ہیز اے کامنٹ um the um the question is that um somebody is asking is there a particular way that you take pcr test under certain temperature or there are some requirement to transport it any anyone uh, uh sara or uh or rizwan name um i mean it's it goes into something it, into a viral culture medium can there jata but i'm actually not sure if there's a particular i know room temperature ke upar stored hota hai it's not in the refrigerator anymore so i think it has to be at room temperature but don't quote me on that uh, i think rizwan would know rizwan yeah, go ahead rizwan so so I, again just to remember this is an rna right RNA and it goes into viral culture media, which is used for blood culture media, which is the same type of media. And it needs to be transported as soon as possible. Because 
आरएनए जो वायरस पे तो नहीं बल्कि ह्यूमन आरएनए पे जो स्टडीज है दे आर वेरी वेरी कॉमन कि उनके उनके अफेक्ट्स जो है जो आरएनए का जो एक्सप्रेशन है दैट चेंजेस विद टेंपरेचर चेंजेस विद टाइम सो द द रिकमेंडेशन वी हैव इज रियली टू ट्रांसपोर्ट इज एज सून एज पॉसिबल एंड इफ द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इज मच मोर देन फ्यू आवर्स देन डेफिनेटली रेफ्रिजरेटेड एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन ड्राई आइस भी भेज सकते हैं अगर सैंपल की वैलिडिटी बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है गुड थैंक यू रिजवान वेरी हेल्पफुल सो नाउ डॉक्टर शकील मिर्जा हैज वन ही रेज हैंड यस वन फाइनल वन फाइनल लिटिल कमेंट दैट द point of care testing uh, with pcr that dr dr rizwan had mentioned i don't think that's for uh, a country like pakistan uh, there, there are issues with health and safety as well in the labs and uh, there are chances of uh, uh, non adherence to sops and all that and at the moment what the government is doing they are designated very secure bio safety labs and there are about 12 now they are uh, increasing to 20 and 32 by the end of the month where they'll be doing about 25000 pcrs every day this is the latest that i have from nih thank okay, you okay great um the last uh, very last one from uh, mohammed naim um you go ahead just uh, uh, gd go ahead Mohammed Naim Okay in the morning hello ji ji boli subah subah jab main zara utha hu to main ek article pad raha tha jisme unhone bataya ki south korea aur singapore mein unhone number of patients ko kaise curtail kiya hai aur that was the uh, uh, way that test and trace उनकी वजह से ये उन्होंने जो आईटी की टेक्नोलॉजी है उसको इन्वॉल्व किया हमारा मैं सोच रहा हूँ कि मैं समझ रहा हूँ कि ये जो हमारा प्लेटफॉर्म है इसमें हमें एक वर्दी डॉक्टर्स के अलावा हु आर वेरी स्पेशलाइज्ड इन दिस फील्ड इसके अलावा हमें कुछ आईटी को या जो रिलेटेड फील्ड है उनको भी शामिल करके इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे लोगों के लिए एक अवेयरनेस क्रिएट करनी चाहिए कि हम इसको कैसे कैसे मूव कर सकते हैं ताकि नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट्स को हम एक ही जगह पे कम से कम दाद में लेके आ सके अदरवाइज जैसे हमारे यहाँ पे चल रहा है वो तो बहुत ही मुश्किल हो सकता है कि हम इसको कंट्रोल भी कर सके जस्ट मैं डॉक्टर सारा से और आपकी जो वर्दी ओपिनियन है वो मैं देखना चाहता हूँ इसके बारे में क्या ख्याल है आपका specialized other fields from uh, apart from medical line so you mean um, the public health officials be of course would be related to healthcare like do you mean like people who uh, like someone from the government or i'm not sure uh... i i think um, what i have understood this this is a geographical um a uh, solution for example in pakistan it has to be a solution there in us obviously their it people are involved and they are um you know the tracing is being done but in this this is not the purview of this platform to involve it um personnel and implement something in pakistan because that is uh, that cannot be done without the without the policy makers uh, involvement and the government of pakistan so this is something that has to be a regional solution so yes, uh, uh, you have any comment comment uh, sorry kaleem go ahead first and yes yeah, shahid yeah, i totally agree with you mera khayal ye hai ki jo model log dekh rahe hain china ka ya south korea ka wo model jo hai wo it has lot of uh, issues and a lot of positivity plus somebody have to, somebody has to be very careful about this thing ye policy makers ki baat hai isme privacy ki baat hai iske andar 
आपकी ट्रैकिंग की बात है वहां पर वो आपके फेस रिकोगशन आपके एप्स के साथ आपकी नोटिफिकेशन आपकी जीपीएस की लोकेशन से आपके अप्रॉक्सिमिटी में जितने लोग हैं उन तमाम की लोकेशन सेंट्रलाइज गवर्निंग बॉडी सो यूर टॉकिंग अबाउट होल सेटअप ऑफ सर्वेलेंस टू दी एक्सट्रीम एंड आई डोंट नो कि पाकिस्तान के अंदर वो टेक्नोलॉजी मौजूद है कि नहीं है पाकिस्तान के लोग उस चीज को uh, उसको किस तरीके से देखते हैं तो इट्स बियॉन्ड द स्कोप ऑफ समबडी लाइक अस हु आर यू नो बेसिकली अ फिजिशियन एंड ट्राई टू लर्न एंड यू नो ईच डे टू हाउ टू डील विद दिस राइट लास्ट कमेंट बाय रिजवान रिजवान नेम यू हैव एनीथिंग टू ऐड सो व्हाट आई वांटेड टू से कि टुडेस डिस्कशन रियली वाज वेरी वेरी हेल्पफुल आई वाज जस्ट समहाउ आई डिडंट गेट चांस टू पार्टिसिपेट बिफोर बट आई वाज टॉकिंग टू शाहिद एंड वी थॉट दैट we should do one uh, session on diagnostic modalities and invite someone like zara hasan jo ke pakistan mein aga khan university ki uh, professor hai and and she has developed the test in house and in very valuable and knowledgeable plus uh, someone else also like chuktai lab or or sandan or arm force institute of pathology because we really want to uh, and we can bring some people from us also who are doing this testing and we can talk about that uh, what type of uh, you know what is the best way to use this technology in pakistan real time pcr based and how to develop that test and number 2 how what are the utilities of pcr versus uh, immunological testing so we will we will probably do it sometime next week but we will right uh, i will uh, definitely um I request uh, you Rizwan if you can coordinate that we will uh, share our uh, speaker and panelist uh, schedule with you and you can uh, you know pick up any date uh, that is available and that will be a great uh, and we will uh, advertise that more uh, than other uh, you know obviously every every um topic and every um uh, session is important but if we have um you know uh, Uh, speakers that uh, you know can really talk to one particular subject then we can advertise that people who are interested in that diagnostic then they should not miss that lecture so with that i i, I will if i may add here i can ask because bhai the zaman tarik who is head of virology at chukpai's lab and he was in afip as well very pioneering virologist right, right. absolutely absolutely yes. so shiki i can coordinate with you and and is one okay. both and we will get uh, that going thank you so i would uh, ask um, first uh, the panelist uh, for any last comments and then finally uh, sara and i'll thank uh, everybody and then we'll wrap it up any comments from our panelists uh, i just have one comment this is dr kabani um, yes. you know all this discussion and somebody raised a very good question who oh, how do we clinically tell in today's in this environment with this kind of a symptomatology uh, which patient may be covid and which may not be and it brought to my mind the words of my uh, professor nabia hasan from fatma jena she used to always tell us that talk to your patients they'll tell you the diagnosis and today i feel like all we can do is talk to the patient we can't examine them our testing is not Uh, completely solid so i in my mind when i am talking and i've had several phone calls from colleagues friends uh, patients uh, that uh, want to know do you think this could be covid the way i have classified it in my mind i just wanted to reiterate that uh, that you can divide the symptoms into constitutional symptoms like systemic sy- symptoms which include fever myalgia and headache and the most common one amongst that is the fever and then the second one that i found very common was myalgia and sara can correct me if i am um, wrong on that uh, the second system would be the upper respiratory system and there the symptoms that you are you should be looking for is sore throat and a cough uh, the two most common symptoms and the cough is usually a dry cough no uh, no rhinorrhea uh most of the time no rhinorrhea right, no, i think it's very very little that you have seen that for example that's how i've been in my mind differentiating it from the common flu um and then the lower respiratory now if it gets to dyspnea shortness of breath chest tightness 
um, then that's the time to be get very serious about it and and possibly send the patient to the hospital. The last symptom that I've come across a lot is the gastrointestinal tract. And you know there are the data says about you know 10 percent, five percent. And the most recent one I saw was about 40%, as Sarah had mentioned. So I just thought that if you systematically think through, uh, apart from the history, contact, travel, um, healthcare worker or not, exposure, uh, that's how I've been dealing with it. So I just wanted to share that. That is very helpful, uh, Dr. Kavani. I think... Um, Shahid, can I say something? This is right. Sajid. Sure, uh, Sajid, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I heard um, Dr. Kavani's comment and those were helpful, but I just want to make a point that uh, it depends that in which scenario you are seeing patients, because of course, if the patient is in a position to relate his or her history or in an outpatient setting or with mild illness, not requiring ICU, then definitely symptoms can be helpful. But if they get to the point where they are getting sick, so as we have mentioned, and even in my yesterday's talk, that most of the symptoms, they are non-specific, including myalgias, including fever, uh, shortness of breath. So um, I don't think that we have much uh, margin to rely on symptoms that much. And especially when the patients are getting sick, then the diagnostic labs from um, uh, which we are noticing, and uh, those are also uh, mentioned in Italian and uh, uh, Chinese uh, literature that's coming, that you know, the labs would be your mainstay. Even radiographic findings are, in, uh, you are lucky to have like, you know, specific patchy, uh, but labs is something, is including ferritin, LDH transaminases, lymphopenia. If you combine those things, then in a hospital setting or ICU setting, you know, the, the labs would be more um, helpful for making a diagnosis. Oh, I totally agree. I, I, I totally agree with you, Dr. Sajid. What I was referring to was somebody's comment that when they're out in the community, family practice doctors that are coming across yes. patients, that's Absolutely. what I was referring to. So I, think, I, think, I think both, uh, both are not mutually exclusive. Dr. Kabani's comment and Dr. Sajid, they are not, I, I see them sequential. So the first, when the patient is talking, you do that. And when, when patient is very sick, you do the lab. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the, uh, the, the, then Sarah, I'll come back to you. Sure. Uh, any uh, of the um, panelists, any, anybody last comments? Okay, so Sarah, go ahead. Oh, sure. So I just wanted to echo what Dr. Kabani said. I think in the outpatient setting, thinking through things symptomatically, um, and you know, while the clinical manifestations can vary, there are typical symptoms that have been described, and pretty consistently, we are seeing those symptoms. Some mix of that. But the agar koi marees hai, jisko seasonal allergies hai, for example, uski wajah se zukam hai. Like so, it helps to sort of piece through what might be going on with the patient. Us hisab se aap unka uh, visit to the clinic be safe kar sakte hai, to really try to take a history and see what might be going on and whether you really need to bring the patient in or not. Great. I think uh, it um, again br uh, brings us to, to the end of this, uh, this session. Again, very helpful, very um, interactive. That's, that's, the, that's the idea. So uh, I, I understand some of the attendees and, and some comments and questions were like, uh, there has to be a guideline and and from you know sign and symptoms to the to the presentation clinical presentation and diagnostics and labs and all that which is which is fine and we will try to to get that on one page and some with some references and all that but i think those are also available in so many um, uh, dependable uh, websites such as cdc um, WHO, um, up to date, uh, uh, and different um, other NIH. So, but but the the purpose of our session is more, you know, uh, interactive questions uh, mm -hmm. and bits of uh, bits and pieces. So sometimes you know we get lost in in so many uh, fragmented question and answers. But I hope that uh, that uh, together with that. Um, reference where you can read about all about 
COVID and uh, disease, uh, this session is also helpful. So I'll, I'll thank our uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Sara Temur um, from New York, uh, and our panelists, uh, as well as our attendee. Like I said, all our attendees are as important as panelists and speaker, and we invite you, all attendees, to please give us your dates when you want to be panelists, because we, we need it to be a very uh, collaborative. So we want all the attendees to get a chance to be panelists, as well as even moderator and all that. So, um, so please give your, um, your dates when you're available so that we can put you in, in a certain uh, our structure schedule. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.